All right, let's go ahead and jump right into today's bit of news and rumors, and that has to do with Mo Kuyper's mock draft. The 4.0 mock is officially out, and number 13 overall, he has us taking, I think, the perfect pick, C.D. Lamb, the wide receiver out of Oklahoma. This, to me, is ideal, as perfect as it gets at number 13 overall, and it's pretty much it's simple. 49ers need a wide receiver, so why not get the best receiver in the NFL draft, and that is, of course, C.D. Lamb out of Oklahoma. Now, here's the deal. I've seen a lot of you guys chilling out and waiting here and talking about all the different receivers we could be doing in terms of the chat. Some people like Ruggs, some people like Judy, some people like Lamb. Here's the deal. We have no idea who the 49ers like the most. Some teams legitimately have Henry Ruggs as their, as their number one wide receiver. Some have Jerry Judy, some have CeeDee Lamb, some have Justin Jefferson. There's a report Denver has Denzel Mims as their number one guy. So we don't know who the 49ers will like, but for me, and apparently for Mel Kuyper, we were both really, really like CeeDee Lamb. Here's what Mel had to say about CeeDee Lamb, of course, going to our 49ers. Quote, Lamb is a big play threat and a technician as a route runner, and he'd be a great complement to the versatility of Debo Samuel. The thing about CeeDee Lamb I think people forget is just how explosive he is and how much of a deep threat big play guy he really is. Now, we know he's a, he's a big play guy, but the deep threat over the top ability of CD Lamb is bar none. It is second to none in this year's draft. The stats, as you'll see on your screen right now, just jump off the board with CD Lamb. I mean, they just leap off of the board with Lamb. 16, 62 catches, 1,300 yards, 14 touchdowns, and the big one on the right side of your screen, 21.4 yards per catch. Think about that. Yards per catch last year was 21.4. That is unreal for a wide receiver. Now, listen, is it the Big 12? Sure. Is it Big 12 corners? Sure. This is still an elite receiver. This is a receiver that will transmit, translate well into the NFL. Whoever gets him, whether it's a team earlier, a team later, or our 49ers is going to be lucky. I think he's the best receiver in this draft. Perfect size, perfect speed, perfect route running. He had a great college career. And am I a little bit biased? Sure. I, of course, went to Baylor. I covered many C.D. Lamb games. The four Oklahoma games that I saw and the three I covered all featured C.D. Lamb, and he dominated Baylor whenever I was there. Saw him up close in person, and trust me, guys, I'm not a draft scout. I like to cover the draft. I watch my draft film. I consider myself a draft expert, but I just placed up the blind eye test here, watching him play football. This guy is absolutely unreal. Now, going back to Mel Kuyper's mock draft, think about this. Let's have a look at where other people went in Mel's 4.0 mock draft. So Jerry Judy, this is why he was actually available at 13 Lamb, was Judy went nine to the Jacksonville Jaguars in Mel's mock, which is interesting. They do need a wide receiver, but they have other needs as well. Cornerback is very important for the Jaguars. Defensive tackle could be important. So I'd be surprised if Jerry goes at number nine. CJ Henderson, a spot we thought at 12 for the Raiders. Mitch, uh, Mitch over at the Raiders report might disagree with this pick, but I thought this would be CeeDee Lamb at, at 12, but no, it's CJ Henderson, the corner out of uh, – out of uh, Florida, Justin Jefferson goes 15, and then Xavier McKinney, the first safety over Grant Delpit, goes to number 17 overall. I will say this, though. At Atlanta Falcons, I live here in Atlanta, and I heard the Falcons are looking to move up, and if they move up, they're looking to go for C.J. Henderson or uh, Javon Kinlaw. So Henderson going 12 could be a little bit different in terms of uh, what team he goes to if Atlanta wants to go ahead and move up. Okay, type your votes in the comment section right now. Would CeeDee Lamb be perfect at number 13? Would you take Lamb at number 13? Type Y down below for yes, and type N down below for no. You guys know the drill. You should be typing Y right now. If you're going to type N in the comment section, tell me which receiver you would rather have at 13, or which guy, I guess you'd say, would rather have at number 13 overall. Y for yes, N for no. Jackie says yes. Carlos says yes. Everybody's saying yes right now. No no's as of right now. Unknown. Orlando's in here. What up, Orlando? He says Y. Okay. A lot of guys are agreeing with me on CeeDee Lamb. Before we go on, if it is Lamb, if Lamb is picked, then whenever he officially gets drafted, he will be given this 49ers hat right over here on the uh, right side of your screen. This is the official 49er draft hat. You've probably seen this if you're a fan of the channel. We keep showing it because it's selling like hotcakes. Like you guys cannot get enough of the 49er hats. We want to get them to you before they run out there. Chatsports.com slash 49 draft is the place to get them all authentic. This is the real deal. This isn't some you know, knockoff from a different country. This is the real deal right here. Chatsports.com slash 49 draft. Click the link in the description. You'll find that hat right there. Okay, the next, the next pick that the 49ers would have, it's very difficult to say, but he is a cornerback out of Auburn. I like to just call him Noah. Now, if you want to try and pronounce his last name, you can Google the pronunciation. I was studying it earlier today. Basically, everyone I watch butchers it. We call him Noah. He's the, cornerback. He's the defensive back out of Auburn. He's the cornerback replacement for... 
Is it Emmanuel Mosley or could it be for Richard Sherman? So this is, of course, the 31st overall pick in Mel Kuyper's 4.0 mock draft. And have two picks overall. The size is right about average for a corner, 5'11", 200 pounds. He played and started in all three years when he was at Auburn, a name that we're not necessarily hearing as a top first round cornerback but mel kuyper apparently is very very high on him here's what he said about uh, about noah just a couple of days ago whenever his mock came out quote since i gave the 49ers a wide receiver with their first pick consider this two needs filled the defense had issues on the other side of the uh excuse me the defense had issues on the other side uh, of Richard Sherman all last season. And Sherman is 32 and only signed through 2020. San Francisco has had to get younger here. He's raw, but he's a tremendous, he has tremendous upside. He's also a dynamic kick returner. Okay, Noah is raw. He is a raw talent who, of course, is going to need to learn, but who better to learn under than Richard Sherman? This is not a pick because Emmanuel Mosley is garbage. This is a pick because Richard Sherman is 32 years old and is only signed through next year. Now, can Sherman play for three more years? Maybe. I mean, hopefully, right? But at the same time, it's not guaranteed that he's going to be able to play for the next two or three years. So you want to sure up the cornerback slot, go ahead and do it right now. That's at least Mel Kuyper's thinking whenever he gets into this one. It's interesting when it comes to corners because like CJ Henderson went 12 in this mock draft. So of course, not there at number 31 overall. Henderson, no picks last year. Noah, no picks last year. It's not a very strong cornerback group besides Jeffrey Okuda, who will be a top 10 pick. That could be an option for the Jags at number nine overall. But still, he's fast. 37-inch vertical leap. He had a good broad jump. Bench press shows shows his strength. I'm not exactly over the moon with this pick, but at the same time, whatever corner they were able to, you know, you know, conjure up at number 31, I think would make a lot of sense. Other notable picks. Again, I'd like to show you guys where other names that we recognize here in the 49ers report, where they went and Mel Kuyper's draft. He has Brandon Ayuk, of course, the wide receiver out of Arizona State, all the way up at 22 overall to the Minnesota Vikings. Patrick Queen went 28, the linebacker uh, out of LSU. Yurder Gross, Gross, Gross Matos, excuse me, one of the uh, better defensive end prospects out of Penn State goes 29. And T. Higgins, the wide receiver out of Clemson, is falling in the draft. He went 30 overall to the Green Bay Packers. Ayuk is the big mover here, though. That's a third or fourth round prospect who now has gone from a second round prospect to a first round prospect and Mel Kuyper's mock draft. Again, depends on what your GM likes. What are your scouts like? You like the big boy and Brandon Ayuk? You like T. Higgins? You like Henry Ruggs? Who knows? They're going to go a lot of different places, but I want to share with you guys this mock draft the way you're up to date because we're going to do a mock draft for the 49ers, my own mock draft next week. So we'll see Mel's, we'll see mine next week. So give me your grades. Give me your Mel Kuyper draft grades right now. Um, I want to know what you guys think. A, B, C, D, or F. I don't think this is an F at all. I think this is an A or a B. Honestly, Lamb and then whoever they get it at number 31 to me is a perfect draft. I think that's a perfect draft, especially if it's maybe they trade out at number 31 and get some second or third round picks overall. Lamb at 13 is an absolute A+. plus. If it was Ruggs, to me it's a B because Ruggs is not as good as Lamb. If it was Jerry Judy, it'd be, a, it'd be an A- minus overall because Lamb's a little bit better. I've seen a lot of Bs here right now. B, A-, minus B. Okay, that's fair. B, B plus. I don't think it's a C. Orlando says A plus. Moses says B. All right, that's fair enough. I think we all basically agree. I don't agree with a C, Adrian Lopez. I think this is a pretty good draft because, again, all the corners aren't that great. Unless you're getting Jeffrey Okuda, the corners in this draft are not over the moon fantastic. So any quarter at number 31, whether it was Henderson or Noah or somebody else, I think is going to be as good as we could hope in terms of what they would look like at number 30. Okay, now we have hit 20K subs. Think about that for a second. I've been asking for you guys to sub to get us to 20K for weeks. And guess what? We hit it just the other day. The bosses are very happy. I appreciate that from you guys. 20,000 of you guys are subscribed to the best 49ers channel here on YouTube. I greatly appreciate it. Can we get 25? Maybe? Maybe? I'm not going to push too hard. Listen, I just appreciate all you guys who have subbed to the 49ers report. You guys make this possible. I mean, we got... 400 people watching this stream right now. I know we're all stuck inside. We're bored. But we're trying to give you guys the best content we possibly can have. And speaking of the best draft content, we actually are going to be live for all seven rounds of the NFL draft on our main YouTube channel, chatsports.com slash, uh, or youtube.com slash chatsports TV. Links in the description box right now. Listen, this is the best place to watch the NFL draft. Trust me, it's the best place to watch the NFL draft. We were the most watched online NFL draft in the world last year. All seven rounds. Round one, live Thursday night. You see it on your screen right there. Again, main channel, chatsports.com, youtube.com, slash chatsports TV. And then, of course, rounds uh, rounds four through seven will be day three. Rounds two will be on Friday. We'll have all the live coverage. So if you're sitting at home, right, your cable's not working, or you just want to watch the best draft show, go ahead and check out these guys over at Chat Sports. I might be involved as well. Rumor has it. I'll at least be on Twitter. So you always follow me on Twitter 
at Real Thomas Mott overall. There is some other news that I want to talk about. I want to get to that here in a second. And maybe it's not news regarding that boy Naris, but it's regarding a guy we all have at least hinted at wanting in uh, at some point in the NFL. Ola Beckham Jr. Is on, is on the trade block. Okay, WFAN is reporting. You guys have already read this because I get a lot of DMs about OBJ every single day on my Twitter account. He apparently is being shot by the Cleveland Browns, and apparently the Vikings and Browns are, quote, talking about a trade that would be a second round draft pick and a fifth round draft pick to go ahead and get OBJ. Now, let me just say this. I was doing a little bit of last second research on OBJ before I came on live here. For you guys, the way you're up to date, the Vikings have unequivocally denied their interest in Odell Beckham Jr. Multiple sources have said this is not true. So you have a very reputable WFAN reporter, WFAN, one of the biggest radio stations in, in, in America, the biggest overall market size is New York City. They say it's true. There's some Viking team reporters say it's not true. So what's happening? Well, I think it actually might be true. We'll talk about that in a second, though. Although, let me say this. If you guys think the Vikings should trade for Odell Beckham Jr., give me a thumbs up right now. Thumbs up this video if you guys think we should trade for OBJ. Only 42 of you guys have liked this video, yet 400 are watching. You know how easy it is to like a video? Just click the little like button. Look, I'll do it right now on my computer. Boom. If you guys think we should trade for OBJ, like the video. If you're a human and you're alive and you're watching the video, like it as well. We should be getting hundreds of likes right now instead of just 48. So get to those likes right now. Count on you guys. Count on you guys. Okay, so back to the trade. Here is what the projected trade looks like, according to WFAN. A second-round pick and a fifth-round draft pick by the Vikings for Odell Beckham Jr., which really is pretty darn cheap, seemingly, as the Vikings just gave up Stephon Diggs for a first-round draft pick to the Buffalo Bills just a couple of weeks ago. This is a pretty good trade, honestly, for both sides, because the Browns still have very good receivers in Jarvis Landry. They have a young guy in Callaway. I believe they still have uh, Callaway. Still a very good football team and a very good receiver core. I signed Austin Hooper from the Falcons in the offseason. And the Vikings get OBJ and keep their first-round pick number 22 overall. This is great for both sides. The question, then, that you guys are all asking what could we do? Could we get Odo Beckham Jr.? Well, I have a mock, mock trade that would look like uh, something like this. So the Browns would get number 31 overall. We would give up a sixth round draft pick and get OBJ. I think that would do it. Now, the question is, is this enough? Think about it. Vikings would give up a second and a fifth. So we do a first and a sixth. That's how my mind worked. I think this would get it done. And you'd also keep number 13 overall. So you get OBJ and you just keep number 13 and you'd only give up a sixth round draft pick. Now, the question is, do you want Odell Beckham Jr., right? Do you like Odell Beckham Jr.? A lot of people are saying thumbs down. They don't like Odell Beckham Jr. Listen, do the stats say he's a good player? Yes, 100%. 2019, over 1,000 yards receiving, and yet he was injured the entire year. He's been dominant his entire career. The question is, is he a good enough player in the locker room, off the field, to actually warrant trading for him? That's the question. I don't know if I can answer that. Now, listen, here's the deal. If you're going to go ahead and force me to decide if I want OBJ or not, let me just say this. I would give up number 31 overall, okay? I would give up 31 overall. I would not give up 13. No, not a chance. I would not give up 13, but I would go ahead and give up number 31 overall. That, to me, is worth it for Odell Beckham Jr. Because, hey, 13, you can still get CeeDee Lamb. Both receivers, very, very good. 